بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ومن يطع الله والرسول فأولئك مع الذين أنعم الله عليهم من النبيين والصدق والشهداء والصالحين وحسن أولئك رفيقا أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين بارئ الخلائق أجمعين ثم الصلاة والسلام على سيدنا ونبينا ومولانا وحبيب قلوبنا وطبيب نفوسنا وشفيع ذنوبنا أبي القاسم مصطفى محمد صلى الله عليه وآله أجمعين وأصحابه المنتجبين أما بعد قال الله تعالى في كتابه الكريم ما كان محمد أبا أحد من رجالكم ولكن رسول الله وخاتم النبيين وكان الله بكل شيء عليما In the name of Allah, the most merciful, the most gracious Respectable audience, distinguished listeners, honorable viewers, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Dear listeners and respectable audience, you might be well aware that in the previous lecture we talked about the immunity of the Holy Quran from distortion. Various traditional and rational reasons and arguments were put forth to prove and demonstrate the immunity of the Holy Quran from distortion. All types of distortion, distortion in addition or distortion in deletion. Today, God willing, we are going to talk about the seal of prophecy. You know that seal of prophecy means that after the final messenger came, there will be no nomination, there will be no candidate for prophecy and for prophethood. When the Holy Prophet Muhammad, peace upon him and his household, was designated as final messenger, so no one should expect that another one should come and be as a, as a messenger of Almighty Allah or to complete his religion. So the seal of prophecy, or being the seal of the prophets, is one of those exclusive characteristics of Muhammad, peace be upon him, in his household. No one shares these characteristics with Muhammad, peace be upon him, in his household. So through Muhammad, peace be upon him, in his household, the gate of Nubuwa, or prophethood, has been closed. No prophet or no messenger will come after Muhammad, peace be upon him, in his household. So this is one of those exclusive and unique characteristics of our holy prophet. The seal of prophecy is a more confessional concept rather than a rational one. It means there are valid arguments, there are justifiable reasons within the religious literature and religious texts that proves this concept that through Muhammad peace upon him in his household, so prophethood and prophecy has been finalized. And through rational reasons or through rational demonstrations, through demonstrative reasonings, or it is hard 
to prove the seal of prophecy through rational arguments. Some confessional reasons are there that prove the seal of prophecy. What are those arguments? So let us begin our discussion today with the lexical and technical meanings or concepts of seal of prophecy. As you know that when I recited this verse of the Holy Quran, مَا كَانَ مُحَمَّدٌ أَبَا أَحَدٍ مِّنْ رِجَالِكُمْ وَلَاكِنْ رَسُولَ اللَّهِ وَخَاتَمَ النَّبِيِّينَ This وَخَاتَمَ النَّبِيِّينَ means Khatam means something that you conclude and you bring something into its end. When you write down the letter, when you completed writing a letter and you wanted to send it, so finally you stamp it. The old generations used to finalize and to end their letters putting this stamp meaning that this letter is sealed. No one has access to this letter unless it should be received by the addressee. So here Almighty Allah says in this verse of the Holy Quran in Surah Ahzab that مَا كَانَ مُحَمَّدٌ أَبَا أَحَدٍ مِّن رِجَالِكُمْ was not the father of a man among you, but he is the apostle of Allah. وَخَاتَمَ النَّبِيِّينَ In the seal of the prophets. وَكَانَ اللَّهُ بِكُلِّ شَيْءٍ عَلِيمًا In Allah has knowledge of everything. This verse of the Holy Quran explicitly signifies the seal of prophecy. Muhammad, peace be upon him, in his household has been identified as the seal of prophets. The lexical meaning of khatam is a ring that they were used to use their ring as stamps. When they had written letters and wanted to send the letters for their friends, for their fellows, they used to seal their letters with this ring as stamping those letters, meaning that this letter is kept a secret. No one has access to the content of this letter. The same meaning has been used for seal of prophecy of our Holy Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, in his household, meaning that Almighty Allah has sealed prophecy with our Holy Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, in his household. La The Muslim, along with their different ramifications and denominations, have consensus in this respect. It is a matter of consensus amongst all the Muslims. Even some of the factions have counted the seal of prophecy of our Holy Prophet Muhammad, peace upon him, as one of the pillars of faith. The Muslims should believe in seal of prophecy of our Holy Prophet Muhammad, peace upon him. So what are the reasons behind the seal of prophecy? So the first reason is what it was told, and that is the explicit verse of the Holy Quran, the explicit content of the verse of the Holy Quran. 
It is not ambiguous. It is not something equivocal. It is not something that should be ambiguous, that should be unclear. No, the meaning is clear. The meaning is not doubtful. No one doubts, no one is skeptical about the meaning of this verse of the Holy Quran. So the first reason, the first valid reason behind the seal of prophecy is our Almighty Allah's commandment, our Almighty Allah's verses that has been revealed in the form of the Holy Quran. So this is a very valid reason for the Muslims that when something is said by Almighty Allah, so they wholeheartedly receive it, and they accept it wholeheartedly, without any question. If something is explicitly mentioned by Almighty Allah. The second reason behind the seal of prophecy is a frequently narrated tradition. A widely transmitted narration. And that is a tradition that has been decoded, that has been transmitted by both the Shi'ats and the Sunnites. You know that in the final days, when our Holy Prophet Muhammad, peace upon him in his household, was to travel from this world, so there was a battle by the name of Tabuk. So all the companions gathered and clustered around our Holy Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, getting everything prepared that they have to go for this battle. But exceptionally, there was a very exceptional case in this battle. From the outset of Islam till that day, Imam Ali salam, was ready in all those wars and all those battles. But this time, the Prophet Muhammad peace upon him in his house will say that Ali has to sit and Ali has to remain in the city. He has to supervise and he has to manage the affairs of those who are remaining in the city. So Ali salam, got despaired a bit and he got a bit disappointed. But our Holy Prophet Muhammad peace upon him said here a very, very nice hadith and tradition and that is called Hadith Manzilat. In this tradition, our Holy Prophet Muhammad peace upon him in his household says, أَمَا تَرْضَى أَن تَكُونَ مِنِّي بِمَنْزِلَةِ هَارُونَ مِنْ مُوسَى إِلَّا أَنَّهُ لَا نَبِيَّ بَعْدِي It means that aren't you satisfied of your position? To me, you are the same as Arun to Moses. How important part Arun had during the prophetic mission of Moses السلام, that much important, that much significant role and position you possess and you have with my prophetic mission. Your position is similar to that of Arun in relation to Musa salam. Yours to me is like that. Do not worry. In this place, our Holy Prophet Muhammad peace upon him in his household says that, O oh Ali, aren't you satisfied with this high and remarkable position you possess? How remarkable and noteworthy position Arun acquired in respect with Moses, the same has been possessed by you. Do not worry. Do not think that I am not taking you to this battle because of this, that you have to miss this opportunity. No, you have your rewards in the sight of Almighty Allah. So this tradition explicitly connotes the seal of prophecy. By the explicit words of our Holy Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, in his household, giving this news 
giving this prediction that no other candidate, no other nominee for prophecy or for prophethood would come after me. I am the final and the last messenger of Almighty Allah. So such traditions again are available in the rest of the traditional sources and the traditional books. For example, in the very peak of eloquence, that is the compilation of letters and sermons of Imam Ali salam, he has also given this nickname to our Holy Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him, sometimes calling him Khatamun Nabiyin. It means the seal of the prophets. It is a great honor that he has acquired that prophecy should be finalized and should come to its end through Muhammad peace be upon him in his household. Or he has said in this respect, وَخَتَمَ بِهِ الْوَاحِي Through him revelation has stopped. And it is legislative sense revelation will not come afterward. So all these traditional reasons, all these traditional arguments prove the claim that we have made that Muhammad peace be upon him and his household is the seal of prophets. And through him, the door of the prophethood and the door of the prophecy has been closed. No other one is there that we have to expect him or we have to see that he has to come as a prophet. No, afterward, no other prophet we will not be able or no one should be expecting other prophets to come and to emerge. Inna So, respectable audience and distinguished listeners, these were the lexical and technical meanings of Khatam and Khatamun Nabiyin and the arguments we put forth to prove the seal of prophets. So, let's now touch some of the doubts that have been raised in this respect. So right now we are going to touch briefly some two important doubts that has been raised in this respect. Firstly, they say that this word of Khatam that has been used in this verse of the Holy Quran, we should not take it serious. We should take it light. How? They say that ring is a decorative, it is an ornamental means, it is an ornamental instrument. It is not very much necessary, it is not very much essential. If you wear a ring or if you do not wear, it makes no difference. Here they believe in here, Almighty Allah wanted to say that Muhammad, peace be upon him, in his household is a very important prophet amongst all my messengers. Muhammad, peace be upon him, possesses a very high rank, a high position in the chain of the prophets. They say that it does not have the literal meaning, rather it has a metaphorical meaning. We should not say that, yes, prophecy has been sealed by the Prophet Muhammad peace upon him, or Muhammad peace upon him is the seal of the prophets. No, Muhammad peace upon him is possessing a high rank, a decorative position, 
it means a very symbolically talking, he possesses a very good and formidable position amongst the chain of the prophets. So to respond to this doubt, that is easy, you know that we should not interpret every verse of the Holy Quran without having valid evidence, without having valid contexts. No, the context is clear. And there is no need that we have to interpret and we have to find some metaphorical meanings for this verse of the Holy Quran so that it should serve our purpose. There is no need. So in this verse of the Holy Quran, Almighty Allah says that Muhammad peace upon him is not the father of any man among you. He is the apostle of Allah and the seal of the prophets. Allah has knowledge of all things. It means we should not interpret the verse of the Holy Quran in a meaning that should be counter to its literal meaning, unless there is valid and rational reasons behind. So, respectable audience, this doubt can be easily removed from everyone's mind that this interpretation that we have to interpret the word of Khatam to the meaning of we can say ring as a decorative ornament, as a decorative means or as a decorative instrument, not as a meaning of finalizing or sealing the letters, that is not very much true. It suffers scientific evidence. It suffers a scholarly, we can say, depth. Another doubt that has been raised in this respect, that it is that Almighty Allah has said Khatam al nabiyin Almighty Allah has not said Khatam al-Rusul. Yes, our Holy Prophet is the seal of prophets, but he is not the seal of messenger. In the previous sessions, it means on the first two sessions or on the first five sessions, we have talked about the difference between apostle, messenger, and prophet. And we say that there are some very close relations between messenger and prophet. It means between Nabi and Rasul. If Almighty Allah says that Khatam al Nabiin, it means that necessarily there will be no messenger. If he is the seal of prophets, for sure he is the seal of messengers as well. There is no need that Almighty Allah has to repeat it. For they are lazim and malzum. Once again, to count the traditional arguments we put forth for the seal of prophecy are as follows. The first was... The explicit verse of the Holy Quran in Surah Ahzab that Almighty Allah says, The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, in his household is the seal of prophets. This is first. Secondly, our Holy Prophet himself has identified himself as a person through whom prophecy would be sealed. He said, and the difference between me and Moses is that after Moses there were a host of prophets, but after me there will be no one, there will be no nominee, there will be no candidate for covering the seat of prophet. No other one will come as prophet after me. The third important Traditions we have brought, that is, that in the peak of eloquence, Imam Ali salam has identified our Holy Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, in his household as وَخَتَمَ بِهِ الْوَاحِي The legislative form of revelation has been ended through Muhammad, peace be upon him, in his household. After the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, no one will receive legislative revelation. Yes, 
there are many who can receive revelation but in a common sense revelation means an inspiration ilham the shi'ats are of the view that through the seal of prophecy the legislative form of revelation has been ended no doubt in this but there are many other gates towards the hidden world towards the world of the unseen and if a person asks asks us that cannot the human beings have access to the world of the unseen we say that they have access to the world of the unseen but in a limited form through self-purification through self-restraint through self-control through uplifting themselves from spiritual aspects they have access there are many many mystics that they have for sure revelation they have great experiences but one thing it should be mentioned but one thing should be kept in mind that no other religion will come after the religion of Muhammad peace be upon him in his household till the doomsday Muhammad peace be upon him's religion is valid till the doomsday it is not subject to expiration it is not subject to change it is not subject to alteration or distortion it is not subject to abrogation we should keep these titles in our mind no other one will come and will have this claim that i am the abrogator of our holy prophet muhammad peace upon him's religion it cannot be accepted from him because muhammad peace upon him is the seal of prophets so some other doubts are also there and later on inshallah in the next episode god willing we will cover those doubts along with their responses may god bless us all to understand the islamic teachings with profundity with it is depth and secondly may god almighty law give us these blessings to apply them in our own practical life so that we have to be given the final and eternal felicity Thank you very much. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Allahumma anfa'na bil'ilm wa zayyinna bil'hilm wa jammilna bil'afiyah wa karimna bil'taqwa inna waliyya allahu alladhi nazzala al-kitab وهو يتولى الصالحين